Good morning students this is your teacher Neela Melawat and I I hope you are revising well and you're keeping yourself well and your family well also isn't it So dear students in this uh, emergency please focus on your health and your family right they are the most important they are the precious jewels that you have and simultaneously keep your focus on your studies as well since your exams are approaching so work hard for them also okay so today we'll continue our chapter number 3 this is a lecture number 4 of the chapter in the previous uh, module we have talked about the uh, the reproductive systems male and the female and then we've talked about the gametogenesis that is the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis now today we'll continue this particular portion and we'll talk about the menstrual cycle in females i hope you remember that in case of primates we have a menstrual cycle and in case of non primates we have as oestrous cycle right so the reproductive <coughs> the reproductive cycle of females is referred to as oestrous cycle okay dear students and this term basically refers to the periodic discharge of the blood the tissue fluid and the mucus from the reproductive organs of the mature female when the fertilization does not occur in that case this is a periodic bleeding which occurs in the females and it usually lasts for 3 to 6 days and this happens every month right and this is caused by the sudden reduction in the hormones like estrogen and progesterone so two hormones the the amount of these hormones is drastically reduced in during the menstrual cycle and that is why the this flow is removed from the body the menstrual cycle begins in the female when it she enters the puberty age when she enters the teenage that we generally call it right and the first menstruation is referred to as menarche <clears throat> okay when a girl menstruates for the first time that condition is called as menarche and during the menstrual cycle these students the endometrium of the uterus i hope you remember that the endometrium is surrounded by three layers and the innermost layer is called the endometrium this endometrium prepares itself every month to receive the zygote and if there is no fertilization then this uterus lining of the endometrium is shed in the form of a periodic bleeding the menstrual cycle it is repeated after every 28 days okay after 28 days it will be repeated and the ovum will be released in the middle of the cycle that is on the 14th day now menstrual cycle basically is comprised of four phases one is first is the menstrual phase second is the follicular phase third is the ovulatory phase and the fourth is the luteal phase right everyone so we can talk about menstruation is comprised of four phases the menstrual phase then there is an ovulation then there is a luteal phase so you all four phases they have been described in detail after the slide now coming to the menstrual cycle dear students just look at this this is your menstruation period we've indicated up to 28 days right so menstruation occurs between first to five day first four to five days three to five days rather we can say then we have a follicular phase then we have a luteal phase and on this here this phase is called the ovulation phase or the ovulatory phase so you can see the changes in on in when there is menstruation when the menses occurs then you can see the ovarian hormone the level of ovarian hormones the estrogen and progesterone their level is low right and here also you can see the fsh and pituitary hormones also fsh and lh this blue line is uh, lh and the this uh, red line is fsh then during follicular phase the level of ovarian hormone slowly increases lh and fsh also increases and during this 14 to 15 days when there is a ovulation there is suddenly increase in the level of ovarian hormones that is estrogen progesterone see at this stage you can see the ovulation is occurring and there sudden increase in the lh and fsh also and once the ovulation occurs the level of progesterone that is in luteal phase suddenly increases while that of estrogen decreases fsh and lh they also decrease 
the levels also decrease right and you can see the endometrial lining it increases suddenly there is increase in the development of the endometrium in the uterine wall the endometrium the thickening of the endometrium that increases in the luteal phase right then uh, the there is sudden decrease in LH and FSH and there is also uh, the you can say estrogen progesterone and then again the second cycle starts okay dear students now coming to the first phase which is called the menstrual phase or the bleeding phase now this phase it lasts for three to five days menstruation means it is a period when there is a periodic bleeding through the ovary from the uh, you can say the lining of the uterus that is your endometrial lining that will be that will be removed through the vagina in the form of periodic bleeding so that is called your that is called your uh, you can say bleeding phase because there is a breakdown of the endometrial lining and the blood vessels so whatever we know that the endometrium it is preparing itself to receive the zygote and once the zygote is not uh, formed then this lining this preparation of the endometrium it is removed out of the body and it comes out through the vagina now it occurs only when the ovum is released and fertilization does not occur so if the fertilization does not occur then in that case it will be menstruation and if there is no menstruation that means the pregnancy has occurred okay dear students so lack of menstruation means pregnancy so if you are missing your periods this means 100 percent that it has resulted into pregnancy in case of the married females who are having the mating period right second is called the follicular phase <clears throat> in the follicular phase this follicular phase consists of first 1 to 14 days okay so after the menstruation you can say the first 14 days they are referred to as the follicular phase follicular phase means your uh, primary follicle secondary follicle is undergoing the process so that a mature ova could be formed so your primary follicle it will grow and form the graphene follicle the endometrium will again regenerate uh, the two hormones which is FSH and LHL they, the level also increases it causes uh, which result in the follicular development and this also increases the level of estrogen and the SH and FSH they increase they are the, on the peak, peak on the 14th day as I told you on the 14th day the egg will be released so that is your third phase which is called the ovulatory phase so during the ovulatory phase egg will be released into an egg will be released from the ovary and this is the 14th day in the middle of the cycle and during this ovulatory phase LH and FSH they will be highest the level of LH and FSH will be highest or we can say the level of estrogen is also highest okay since the level of LH is highest it is also called as LH surge okay and this LH surge causes the graphene follicles to rupture and release the ovum and once the egg is released then this particular follicle is called the corpus luteum and egg will uh, will reach the will reach the yes the uh, the fallopian tube okay egg is released and it will reach the follic uh, this uh, uh, you can say oviduct or the fallopian tube while uh, the tissue will regen degenerate and that's that is called the corpus luteum this yellow portion is called the corpus luteum and simultaneously you will observe that the endometrium lining is also undergoing thickening process the fourth phase rather should i say it is a luteal phase now this phase begins after ovulation as i told you that third phase is your ovulation and ovulation generally occurs on the 14 day when the highest level of LH and FSH is detected so the ruptured graphene follicle will transform into the corpus luteum and it produces large amount of progesterone because this large amount of progesterone is needed to maintain the endometrium lining and this endometrium is is necessary for the implantation of the zygote and that will result into the pregnancy if fertilization occurs the corpus luteum will grow and pregnancy continues and the menstrual cycle will stop okay so menstrual cycle will stop fertilization will occur corpus luteum will grow 
pregnancy will continue and menstrual cycle will stop so in and in the absence of fertilization the graafian follicle will transform into corpus luteum the level of progesterone will decrease and the corpus luteum will degenerate to form the corpus albicans right and decrease in progesterone level will lead to menstruation so menstruation cycle basically which started at the age of teenage stops at the age of 50 years and this is called menopause so dear students we should be very very clear between the two words one is menarche okay we have just talked about menarche menarche is the beginning of the cycle and menopause is a is is the is a period at which the life the menstrual cycle will stop that is at the age of 50 okay cyclic menstruation is indicator indicate indicator of normal reproductive phase and it extends between menarche and menopause so jo beech ka time period hai that is your menstrual period okay so menarche is a starting of menstruation and menopause is the is a cessation of reproductive cycle so the normal reproductive cycle the normal time period is, is referred to as cyclic menstruation now coming to the fertilization and implantation now once there is a mating between the men and the female okay once there is a mating between the between the opposite sex then semen the male will release the semen into the vagina okay and this process is called insemination so insemination means the deposition of semen into the vagina of the female during the mating process now these sperms will move through the uh, move through the cervix enter into the uterus and finally they will reach the fallopian tube where egg is present okay they will reach the fallopian tube where egg is uh, present now both ovum and the sperms they will fuse right they will fuse and this will result in the process which is called fertilization okay egg and ovum will fuse and will result in the fertilization process so fusion occurs in the fallopian tube okay fertilization it occurs in the fallopian tube so where does fertilization occur students it occurs in the fallopian tube or the ov duct now sperm will will contact with the zona pellucida of the ovum now what are the events during the fertilization now first of all the sperm which is coming see ovum is present in the center so first of all uh, sperm they will they will come in contact with the zona pellucida layer and induces the changes into this membrane so no other sperm can enter into it okay this 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 yellow portion this greenish portion that you can see is a zona pellucida pellucida layer so once the sperm come first sperm that comes in contact with zona pellucida will bring about changes in this layer so that no other sperm can enter okay so once one sperm has entered then that will block the entry of the other sperm clear and this uh, head of the sperm contains a chromosome okay head of the sperm contains a chromosome and this acrosome has many lytic enzymes which help in the penetration of the sperm through the zona pellucida and the plasma membrane of the egg right and once the egg uh, sperm enters the secondary oocyte will undergo a second meiotic division and will form the egg and the second polar body so in indu induction of the sperm into the plasma membrane induces the meiotic division of secondary oocyte clear everyone and will result in the formation of a ovum and the polar body clear so nucleus of the ovum and nucleus of the sperm will fuse to form the zygote and at this stage the sex of the baby is decided okay at this particular stage that is a fusion of male and female nucleus that is a fusion of male and female gametes the new fusion of nucleus of male and female gamete will form the zygote and at this particular stage the sex of the child will be determined now we can see uh, see the steps so first of all the you can see the sperm it is reaching the acrosome is a reaction will occur first of all the sperm uh, the acrosome will release the enzymes so that it can penetrate into the 
granulosa cells of the corona radiata and this is called this is called as acrosomal reaction what do we call it as acrosomal reaction now once it penetrates it reaches the uh, the few, you can say the sperm it reaches into the plasma membrane of the oocyte and then only this the nucleus will will be able to reach the penetrate the penetrate the female uh, nucleus so fusion of oocyte and the sperm will occur in the in the plasma membrane so there is a cortical reaction will occur and only the nucleus of the sperm nucleus it will be engulfed into the oocyte cytoplasm you can easily see the layers the corona radiata zona pellucida and you can also observe the first polar body and once the sperm enters then only the second meiotic division will occur now these are the following events which occurs see once the sperm has fertilized okay when there is a fertilization clear the fertilization so uh, the in, inside the inside the cytoplasm there you can see that uh, egg nucleus also and the sperm nucleus also these two both the nuclei they will fuse to form a zygote and that will further divide to form a two cell stage then it will divide to form a four cell stage then eight cell stage then 16 cell stage then 32 cell stage and will finally form the blastocyst and this blastocyst will be implanted into the uterus so aapke uterus mein jo plantation hoti hai theek hai wo blastocyst ki hoti hai okay now coming to the sex determination as i told you when there is a fusion between the male and the female gametes at that point of the time the sex of the individual is decided so sex of the baby is decided during fertilization and in the zygote itself now the sex is determined by the sex chromosomes which are present in the zygote as we all know dear students that humans contains two set of chromosomes one is your autosome another is your sex chromosome okay human female has xx and human male has xy so in case of females all eggs will have only x chromosome while the sperms in case of male 50% will have X chromosome and 50% will have Y chromosome. Let's see it diagrammatically. So in case of males, it is XY. In case of female, it is XX. So in male, there is formation of two types of gamete, X and Y. While in case of female, only X egg will be formed. There is an egg that is containing only X chromosome. If the, if the sperm that fuses with the egg is having x chromosome that is a female and if the y if the if the you can say the sperm having the y chromosome fuses with the female of the egg then it is the male so it is the sex of the child is entirely dependent upon the male rather than the female okay so male jo hai jo do tarike ke sperms bante hain male mein female only produces one type of gametes तो कौन सा स्पम एग के साथ फ्यूज होता है दैट विल डिसाइड दी दी जेंडर ऑफ द सेक्स ऑफ द चाइल्ड अगर वाई स्पम फ्यूज होता है अ स्पम हैविंग वाई क्रोमोसोम देन श्योरली इट विल बी अ मेल चाइल्ड एंड इफ द स्पम हैविंग दी एक्स क्रोमोसोम फ्यूज इज द एग देन इट इज अ फीमेल चाइल्ड सो द कंडीशन विच इज देयर इन आर सोसाइटी दैट द फीमेल्स आर बींग ब्लेम फॉर द गर्ल चाइल्ड इज नॉट रेदर the male should be blamed for having the female child right everyone so there is equal probability of male and the female child now cleavage as i told you in the last diagram i showed you that when zyg this diagram i just showed you isn't it dear students we have seen that the zygote will undergo the division so this process is referred to as cleavage so zygote which is there in the isthmus region of the uh, oviduct will undergo the mitotic divisions and the first cleavage will occur within the first 36 hours so once there is a fertilization then within 36 hours the first cleavage will occur first division will occur and this zygote will undergo the stages of two first two cells will be formed then four then eight and then 16 and they are called as blastomeres 
the embryo which contains 8 to 16 blastomeres is called morula. Now in morula also the division will continue and it will form the blastocyst. Right, the blastomeres in blastocyst they will be arranged in two layers. The outermost is called the trophoblast and the inner inner layer is called the inner cell mass. Okay, let us see this. Let us look at this. This is the your blastocyst stage. This outer mass is called your trophoblast and this is called your inner cell mass. So, first there is a fusion of male and female nucleus, then zygote is formed, then it is undergoing division. So, 2, 4, then it is called morula, then it is blastocyst, right everyone? So, blastocyst is having the outer cavity which is called the, you can say trophoblast and then it is called the inner cell mass. The trophoblast will attach with the endometrium and it helps in the implantation and development of the placenta. The inner cell mass will differentiate to form the embryo. So, the complete attachment of blastocyst with the endometrium. Look here. <coughs> हमारे पास ब्लास्टोसिस्ट है नाउ ब्लास्टोसिस्ट जो है वो यूट्रस में जाकर यूट्रस में जाकर प्लांट हो जाएगा ठीक है द ब्लास्टोसिस्ट विल प्लांट इटसेल्फ इनटू द यूट्रस एंड दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड इंप्लांटेशन देखिए यहां पर ये यह आपका यूट्रस है दिस इज द यूट्रस लाइनिंग एंड दिस विल इंप्लांट इटसेल्फ दिस विल मर्ज विद द एंडोमेट्रियम लेयर ऑफ द यूट्रस ओके so trophoblast that will help in merging it with the endometrial layer and the inner cell mass will gradually form the embryo on later stages. Now coming to the pregnancy and the embryonic development. So the chorionic villi. Look, now two things are. One, this is the uterus lining. Okay. So uterus ki lining may be kuch projections honge. Plus, there are some projections on the on the on the trophoblast. ठीक है? जो हमारा जो हमारा blastocyst है, तो blastocyst की जो outermost layer है, that is called that is called trophoblast. So ये trophoblast की finger-like projections हैं, और ये आपके endometrial की projections हैं. So blastocyst की projections को हम कहते हैं chorionic villi. ठीक है? They are called as chorionic villi. While the endometrium finger-like projections, we call it as, we call it as villi of the uterus. Okay, we call it as villi of the uterus. So, the chorionic villi and the villi of the uterus, they will interdigitate with each other. Okay, let's have another color. Like this, they will interdigitate with each other. And this interdigitation will result in the implantation. Okay, that interjudication will result into the implantation, right? Clear? Okay, and later on there will be a formation of placenta. The inner cell mass will then differentiate to form three layers, endoectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. And from these three layers, different organs in the embryo will be formed different um, uh, organs of the zygote will be formed. Clear? And I told you that this interdigitation will later form the placenta. So, placenta, what are the functions of placenta? So, placenta it basically helps in providing nutrition to the embryo. This will transport the amino acids, sugars, vitamins from the, from the mother to the fetal, right? It will bring about the respiration, that is it will transport oxygen, it will bring back the carbon dioxide, it will remove the waste materials from the, from the fetus and then it will also help in transport, transportation of hormones like estrogen, progesterone, human chorionic, gonadotropins. This particular hormones, they will also released from the placenta at different stages. Then it also releases certain antibodies and that will pass to the fetus from the maternal blood. It also stores some glycogen till the liver formation occurs. So placenta jo hai, aapki glycogen ko bhi store karti hai jab tak ki liver formation nahi hoti hai child mein. And most important, it occurs as an effective barrier for the toxic chemicals in germs. So it basically stops or you can say uh, the toxic chemicals or germs from reaching into the growing embryo. 
this is how you can see you can see the placental villi here and the growth of the embryo has started there is umbilical cord which is there isn't it there is a yolk sac you can see the embryo has uh, a growth of the embryo has started clear this is how it happens you can see the interdigitations of the maternal and, uh, and the paternal uh, portion and the formation of the you can say the placenta so this is how the arrangement of the uh, uh, 13 week fetus is shown here 13 weeks clear isn't the picture beautiful dear yes so this is how the growth of a of a child occurs inside the womb of the mother's body right this is your umbilical arteries umbilical cord which is there during the first month of the pregnancy the first organ that is formed is your heart sabse pehle jo banta hai wo heart banta hai right and you can listen to the heart of through your stethoscope the heart can be listened the, uh, the beating of the heart can be listened during the second month the limbs and digits are formed and the end of the 14 weeks most of the organs and the external genitalia organs they have been formed and the first movement and the hair on the head that is during the fifth month so fifth month is very very crucial okay dear you can easily observe the movement of the child and we can see that there uh, there is a growth of hair on the head then is uh, end of the 24 week that is your second semester that means after 6 months the body is covered with fine hairs there is a development of eyelids eyelashes they have been formed in the end of the 9 month the fetus is fully developed and ready to be removed so this is your 9 months child you can see easily the growth is perfectly isn't it the parturition parturition means the uh, you can say uh, delivery of the child so child will be delivered from the female body after 9 months and so this period of pregnancy is called a gestation period what do we call it as the period of gestation period and it is of 9 months and the delivery of the child is called the parturition and it occurs due to the contractions of the myometrium okay endometrium help in the growth of the child it right and it uh, this then myometrium the contractions of myometrium will deliver the child now initial signal of parturition the initial signals of parturition uh, initially starts from the fetus and the placenta so the placenta and the and the fully developed fetus they will start the mild contractions and these are called fetal ejection reflex they are these are called as fetal ejection reflex right then adrenal gland it secretes the hormone that diffuses into the maternal blood and stimulates the oxytocin secretion theek hai fir ek hormone ki secretion hoti hai jo maternal blood mein jata hai aur oxytocin ki secretion ko badha deta hai and this oxytocin causes the forceful contractions in the myometrium which is called your labor pain so labor pain ki jo starting hoti hai wo oxytocin oxy, oxytocin hormone start karta hai so that the child can be delivered out of the female body clear and after this one this oxytocin will force the stronger contractions in the in the uh, in the you can say the uh, in the uterus and this will push the fetus through the birth canal facilitated by the relaxin so relaxin is another hormone which will facilitate the removal of the fetus from the from the uterus to the birth canal and can you tell me what is the birth canal dear students the cervix canal plus your vagina they will behave as the birth canal clear and the, after the delivery once the child has been removed the placenta is also expelled out of the uterus okay placenta ko bhi body se bahar nikal diya jata hai lactation you know once there is a birth of the child then the child cannot eat anything the child primarily depends upon the milk which is produced from the mammary glands of the female so this is called lactation okay the mammary gland of the female it start producing milk towards the end of the pregnancy right everyone so the milk that is produced in the initial days of the lactation is called is called colostrum it is yellowish in color and it contains several antibodies 
which provide the passive immunity to the growing to the newborn baby right everyone and this milk production is controlled by a hormone which is called prolactin which is released by the pituitary gland right and the breast feeding during the initial stages of the periodic growth it is highly recommended for the growing baby and it has been easily observed that the uh, the mothers who do not feed their child the child remains weak and his immunity is not well developed and is not able to fight the diseases so this uh, this colostrum which is fed to the child in the initial days it's very important for the immunity of the child okay so now coming to your homework dear students first of all you make make notes of the topic and i hope that you've already made so you will revise the chapter number 3 you will learn all question answers of the chapter right okay so that's all for today from my side goodbye everyone